and it started three years ago, and it has gone through tremendous growth. I have three friends and colleagues to acknowledge for this. Uh, um, first and foremost, the Vice President for Governance, Risk, and Compliance in Comcast, Dr. Ramesh Seperat, who, who have shown the vision and, and the focus to develop a partnership that is increasingly finding a true meaning for the country. It is becoming a model of how universities work with private agencies and companies to leave an economic impact in an area that is an essential part, an increasingly an essential part of our life. Um, additionally, um, the two co-directors of the center are Professors John Chandy and Professors and Professor Laurent Michel. They have worked tirelessly and intelligently and with focus to create a center that I would claim to be the envy of the country. Um, center for Cybersecurity Innovation um, at UConn. And hopefully some of you might, might get a chance over the next couple of days to, to visit the center. Over the last three years, the School of Engineering also has gone through a similar growth that the CSI has, and I can't stop bragging about it, so I'll just take 30 seconds to brag about who we are and who we have become. Uh, over the last three years, our undergraduate enrollment has increased by almost 70%, which is an amazing number. We are responding to an the national need for engineers, and many of you um, are going to be part of, part of responding to that, that national need. Um, but more than that, our partnership with industry is taking a different focus. Over the last few years, the School of Engineering has forged about $85 million worth of for partnership with industry that are, that's going to be housed in our technology park. And hopefully some of you might have an opportunity to drive by it. It is a majestic building that would come online next um, summer. Beyond that, um, the School of Engineering, if you look at the research growth in the school, um, it has gone up. The new research awards in the School of Engineering has gone up by 220% in the last three years. I have a lot of other, other great news to share with you about the School of Engineering. Washington Post just published an article that referred to UConn as the number one school of engineering in the country that has shown the um, growth in female engineering students. But I'll stop talking about UConn, and I want to in invite to join me my uh, partner in crime, Vice President for Risk, Economic, uh, Risk Compliance and Governance in Comcast, the person who showed the vision and the focus to develop this center, Dr. Ramesh Seferat. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Dean Kazerunian, and thank you all for being here this morning. I want to see, by show of hand, how many new schools we have for this conference. And then of course, absolutely, yes. And returning schools, show of hand. That's wonderful. So uh, the word is spreading, cyber seed is growing. And you know what, on year one, when we decided to initiate this conference under the title of cyber seed, the idea was to really sow the seed that we could develop the workforce that can, in fact, address the growing challenges that we see on our daily lives, whether it's on the business side of, the, of our life or our personal side of our life, to sow that seed and be able to really grow the workforce that our, our country needs and our, our nation needs. So with that, uh, we are hoping to actually take cyber seed on the road next year. So for all the schools here at the, in this conference, we want to partner with you. We want to work with you and we want to find out the next best location to hold cyber seed. And my goal is Dean Kazerunian that we continue to have more than one cyber seed a year. So that's, that's, you know, that's our lofty goal for 2017. But given what we've done with UConn over the last three years, it's definitely achievable. And I cannot thank 
uh, our Yukon partners, Dr. Chandy and Dr. Mich uh, Lauren Mich uh, Michelle, who has been critical to make this a success for us. So this morning, uh, we have a great conference that's been lined up for our practitioners and fantastic competition for our students. We're looking forward to seeing all of you engaged in the conference side, as well as as the competition kicks off in a little bit, uh, you engage in the competition, you'll see where we go in with the themes of this conference. Some of our themes are a little bit out there in terms of our uh, 12 to 24 months of a future outlook for the cybersecurity challenges. And our hope is to make sure that our students kind of think about these developing challenges and go back and work with your faculty members to really develop the curriculum that really deserves for de developing the workforce for the next generation of cyber seat profession cybersecurity professionals. So with that, I, again, I want to welcome all of you. I want to wish you best of luck in the competition as we kick them off after lunch. And, and thank you again for being with us this morning. And more importantly, thank you for UConn for hosting this wonderful event. On behalf of Comcast, we are so proud of this partnership and we continue to grow this partnership over the next few years. Thank you again, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I talked about all the great things that is, are happening in the School of Engineering and in the university. Things don't happen accidentally and by themselves. It was the vision and the support of Provost Choi, Provost Moon Choi, that made all of this happen over the last few years. And thank you for joining us, Moon. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Stores, Connecticut. Since this uh, event is all about security and safety, I'd like to ask all of you to turn off your Samsung Galaxy Note 7s. <laughs> I'm actually Korean, so I can actually make that joke. Um, but as you know, um, this was started three years ago by Ramesh and Kazim Kazarunian. And they were very visionary at the time. The reason being is that cybersecurity affects so much of what we do. But many of the students in the room may not realize it, but cybersecurity research and development really came to being in the mid 80s, before many of you were born. There was a student at Harvard University who went on to go for his doctorate at Cornell University, and his name was Robert Morris. Anybody remember that name, Robert Morris? So Robert Morris created a worm that created denial of service to the entire internet. Now there was no financial gain that he was trying to create, but what happened was he really opened people's eyes. As a result of that, he was actually found, well first of all he was caught, sentenced, went to prison, but there is a silver lining to all of this. After he got out, he went in to get his doctorate, and he's now a professor at MIT. And I guess MIT, they just hired anybody at MIT. <laughs> no, but he is really uh, credited, credited with creating the opportunity for government, industry, and academia to work together to address some very important cybersecurity research. But as you can see from all of the breakdowns and cyber attacks that we've had, our work, or more importantly, your work is not done. If anything, cybersecurity research has to be more sophisticated because the actors are becoming more sophisticated. So it's not a matter of breaking into a banking system and stealing credit card information or just merely denial of service. We now have actors that are creating situations using terms like Cozy Bear and Fancy Bear to break in into systems that can compromise the integrity of our electoral system. So the breakdown in that type of a foundation for society is immense. So the work that you're doing today, going forward, is gonna be so very important. But it's very important for all of you to be creative, innovative, and always be at the forefront if we are to make breakthroughs that are going to secure how the Internet of Things, 
how information is all connected in a very secure way. So with that, I congratulate all of you for being here today. And really, I wish you a great event. We're going to be looking forward to making awards and prizes that are available to the top teams. But by being here, you're making your contributions known to cybersecurity. So thank you very much. So the next speaker is someone that we're very proud of to call one of our own. He is Congressman Joe Courtney. He represents the region that encompasses the shore of, coast of Connecticut as well as the University of Connecticut. And for many years, he has been a very strong proponent of both soft power and hard power. In terms of the hard power, his emphasis in pushing and legislating support for the new $100 billion submarine program that would generate the next generation of nuclear submarine really stands as a testament to his commitment. But he also understands that cybersecurity without any frontiers or boundaries are also going to be realms in which we can be attacked. So his support for data security, his support for cyber attack prevention and defect analysis has been crucial. So I'd like to introduce Congressman Joe Courtney, who's been a very strong supporter of cybersecurity. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mung, for your kind introduction and the invitation to be here. Uh, it's the second out of the three uh, events that you've done over the last three years, along with Comcast, great sponsor. And Cosm has just been a prophet in terms of really trying to raise people's awareness about the, the fact that this is a almost an existential challenge for the country. And frankly, it's going to be um, a persistent one that's going to really go on for, for decades um, to come. He talked about uh, the fact that it's something that I um, have tried to work with them. Uh, just full disclosure, uh, I was one of the members of Congress that Gustafer 2.0 hacked uh, back in July. I had to go get a new cell phone because uh, my cell number and, and email account was released and um, had some pretty interesting emails from pretty strange people, as well as uh, voicemails that were coming in. But the fact of the matter is, is that, um, as we know from last Friday, when uh, the uh, Director of National Intelligence and the Department of Homeland Security basically, um, you know, came right out bluntly and said that this was uh, an attack that came from another nation state, from Russia, that again, this, um, this issue uh, just keeps escalating in terms of the, uh, the threat to uh, just whole sectors that um, really have been totally caught off guard. And the election system, which uh, Mung mentioned, is uh, something which on, on Saturday's New York Times uh, did a, a pretty lengthy story about the fact that our systems are completely vulnerable 30 days out from, you know, obviously a, a national election that the whole world uh, is watching. Uh, the good news in Connecticut is we've got a great team that's already started working hard in terms of hardening uh, our online voter registrations. Uh, but again, just the, uh, the cascade of uh, challenges that um, cyber uh, attacks now sort of uh, rise to is just, uh, again, through almost every sector of American society. I was with the community bankers uh, last week who uh, normally want to yell at me about Dodd-Frank and some other issues. Uh, all they want to talk about now is cybersecurity in terms of just what's, what's happening to people's accounts, mortgages, uh, you name it. And then uh, as a member of the House Armed Services Committee, uh, the Department of Defense, uh, again, now has stood up a cyber command, again, on par with uh, commands for Asia Pacific, uh, uh, the uh, North Atlantic, Central Command for uh, uh, the Middle East. We now have a cyber command. And Secretary Carter, Ash Carter, uh, basically has now set up special rules for, uh, for recruiting, promoting, and retaining folks that just are leapfrogging over the normal chain of command and promotions that uh, the military has had for, for centuries because of the fact that this challenge is so urgent and requires uh, extraordinary steps. So President Obama has designated October as Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, it's almost a moot point now for people that, uh, that they really even need to have a declaration uh, like that. But, you know, it's all good uh, that people, uh, again, from really just every uh, opportunity 
are starting to, to uh, raise uh, the fact that this is a national challenge. It requires a national response. We love the fact that it's here in Eastern Connecticut, go Huskies. But the fact is, is that the, the representation here uh, from, uh, again, universities all across the country, as well as the Coast Guard Academy, which has stood up a, a curriculum as part of the Department of Homeland Security's uh, uh, you know, emerging threat in terms of cybersecurity is, is something that, um, again, we all have to work together uh, as a country in terms of uh, facing up to and addressing. And, you know, the good news for, for people of um, particularly the millennials that are out there right now, we had a, a conference uh, last year where we brought in folks from financial, the financial sector, defense contractors, uh, again, just all different educators uh, that, that came together for a panel. There were roughly about 400,000 job openings. That was what we had at the, the, the event there reported to us. It's probably grown in terms of uh, cyber um, uh, economic opportunity because folks are desperate to find uh, qualified, talented people uh, to, to really uh, address uh, this challenge, which again, as I said, is just now sort of circulated into really almost every sector of our country and our economy. So um, we're glad you're here. Um, we, uh, I was at a cookout the other day down in New London, Connecticut, met a guy with an Ohio State University t-shirt, and I was like, we don't see too many Buckeyes uh, in southeastern Connecticut, what's up with that? And uh, turns out he was uh, just hired from their school of engineering to be part of the team to, to build the Virginia class submarine. So we'll, if, if you like it here, you know, we're, we're always, the door is wide open to have you come back and, and check out the area there. But obviously this is about cross pollen pollination because, uh, again, this is not an issue that is just centered in one congressional district. It's in all 435. Thank you for being here. Thank you for what you're doing and, and really having the vision to, to really choose the kind of um, curriculum that you've, that you've chosen. And, uh, and I can just tell you, um, you've, you've got nothing but um, you know, opportunity, boundless opportunity ahead of you because of that choice that you've made here. And good luck on the prizes today. And if you're in Washington, D.C., come by and visit. The door is always wide open. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Congressman Courtney. I've been called many things, never a prophet. <laughs> so we are grateful to have our next, uh, our next um, guest with us, State Representative Matt Lesser. Um, State Representative um, Lesser represents Middletown, Connecticut. And we are, we are really delighted that he is um, here to, um, with us today. Um, he's a great friend to Yukon and he has been a great friend during his tenure in General Assembly. He is um, here today as the Banking Committee Chair, where he has led the charge for legislation creating a Bill of Rights for student loans and protecting personal financial data. State Representative Lesser. Thank you uh, so much for the kind introduction. Uh, thank you, uh, Congressman Courtney, for your remarks. Uh, thank you to uh, Comcast and Ramesh uh, and all the sponsors today. This is such an important event. Uh, I think Congressman Courtney laid out uh, the specific threats that we're facing. We're moving on from simply having to worry about uh, data breaches led by uh, cyber criminals to now, as of Friday, with the new report from the Director of National Intelligence and Homeland Security, uh, the threat of state actors. Uh, and he's right, they're not just targeting uh, the federal government, uh, but they're now apparently targeting uh, state and local governments as well. Uh, our Secretary of the State, uh, Denise Merrill, was uh, just appointed uh, to be one of the chairs of the new uh, Elections Integrity Cybersecurity Working Group, uh, making sure that our voter registration system is robust enough uh, to withstand uh, potential attacks by state actors. So, that threat, is, that threat is out there. I also want to talk about the incredible opportunity uh, that we have here in Connecticut uh, that I think is uh, really exciting because we really bring together with CSI, uh, but also with our presence as a hub for both the defense sector, but also for the financial services sector, uh, a real home and a real leader on, on cybersecurity issues. Uh, so uh, we're uh, excited to be uh, one of the uh, U.S. hubs of the growing financial technology sector. As more of this uh, industry uh, moves online, uh, we, we need to work uh, with our partners in cybersecurity. We want you to be uh, in Connecticut, and we're so thrilled to have you uh, here today. So uh, 
uh, as, we, as we go forward, uh, as chair of the Banking Committee, I'm working to make sure that everyone has skin in the game uh, so we have a nimble, uh, fast adapting, uh, quick uh, response to emerging threats. Thank you very much. Good morning again. So I think that we are in for a treat this morning. Um, it's my pleasure to actually introduce someone who's a true visionary in Internet of Things. Uh, if you worry about what the future has to hold, um, you need to actually start paying attention because uh, the reality is catching up to what you can see in blockbuster movies. Uh, so we will kick off this morning with a talk by Scott 